Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 63. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Business 210, Chapter 5. If you're in the class, just go to our class website. Hey, this is our second example of the binome dist function. This is uh, bi calculating binomial probabilities for a binomial experiment. Ah. But first, before we can do that, and actually we'll see how to calculate the mean and standard deviation also. But before we can do that, we have to read the problem and figure it out if it is a binomial experiment. A flight from Oakland to Seattle occurs six times per day. The probability that any one flight is late is 10%. What is the probability that exactly two planes are late? Less than two are late. What is the mean and standard deviations? Well, first, let's just see if this is a binomial experiment. Uh, are there a fixed number of identical trials? Yes, six flights. Uh, is each trial only result in a success or failure? Yeah, it's either late or not late. Uh, P remains the same for each trial? Yeah, we have a P of 0 0.10. And are all events independent? Yeah, one plane being late is um, can be assumed to not affect the next plane. So we'll say yes. All right, uh, what is our success? Now, this is kind of a funny success. It says a probability that it's late. So a success is late, or no, uh, plane late. And we'll call that uh, L. And then the probability uh, that it's uh, not or not plain late, we'll say uh, NL. Now what is N? <coughs> oh yeah, this is number of flights per day. And that is 6. Our a variable we're going to define as X random discrete variable number of planes late. So we can either have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So um, we're interested in a 2 on this one. x e equals 2, x is less than 2, x is greater than 2. And probability of the plane being late, that'll be 0.1. Now let's go ahead and uh, calculate. We want to calculate x uh, is equal to 2. <clears throat> We're actually going to not use this column right here. Probability that x is equal to 2 equals binome. Now number of successes, that is going to be our 2. I'm going to click right there. Comma, the number of trials that's going to be 6, number of uh, probability of success. That's going to be 0.1. And then finally, the cumulative. This is exact. So what do we put here? A 0. That means exactly whatever the x is. Now, the next one is number of planes uh, we want greater than or equal to 2. So we're asking, what is the probability that two or more planes will be late? Well, remember, the probability functions always go from the smallest to the biggest. So if we say put a 2 in here, it's going to give us 0, 1, and 2. Now, I plotted a little uh, chart here so we could visually, as we learn how to use binome disk, figure this out. I don't have the right labels and everything because I, it's so small. Ah, but here it is, greater than or equal to 2. So what we want is the 2 is included, that one, that one, that one, that one. But remember, this function and the, and the probability functions go from the low end to whatever x you put in, adding them up cumulatively. So if we want to include the 2, we're going to have to give it a 1, right? Ah, but we're interested in the ones greater than, so we have to do 1 minus. So equals 1 minus binome dist. Number of success is going to be our 2 minus 1, because we need a 1, comma, number of trials. That's going to be our 6, comma, probability of success. That's going to be our 0.1. And then cumulative, we want a 1. So there we go. So we're 11% chance that it will be greater than or equal to 2. Now what about greater than 2? 
Greater than 2 means all of these. Well, this one's not so hard, because if we put a 2 in cumulatively, it'll add them all the way up to the 2. And then we'll just subtract that from 1. So equals 1 minus. And we'll do our 2, comma, and then <coughs> trials probability, and then cumulative is 1, because we want to add up all the ones from the low up to the high. Now, what about greater than 2? There it is. 2 is, no, this is, I'm sorry, I'm dyslexic, I can't see. This is less than 2, so we want everything less than 2. Remember, this one here, less than or equal to, So now we're going to do x less than 2. Well, if we look here, here this one is not included, so we want this one and this one. So we're going to have to put a 2 in and subtract 1, because it'll add up from there to there. Equals binom. Binom dis number of successes. We're going to say 2 minus 1. And then we got our trials, comma, the probability of success, comma, and then 1 for cumulative. Now, this is less than, so it'll add these two up, because in essence, that's a 1. Now, the, the last one is greater than or equal, or less than or equal to. So we want this one. This one's the easy one. We just put in cumulative, and that's what it does. The function by default goes up to whatever x you put in when you do cumulative. So equals binom. And then our number of successes are 2, comma, trials, comma, probability, comma, 1. Now, th that's all of the possibilities and all of the examples of the formulas. But now, we want to um, talk about the mean, the standard deviation for a particular um, binomial probability distribution. Now, think about this. What would the mean mean? It means, on average, during our six flights in the day, how many planes are going to be late? That would give us our average, our typical value. The standard deviation would give us the spread and the data. Let's uh, do it the way we did uh, last video. And then we're going to see that there's a, a different way. And the reason why I want to do it both ways is because the formula that we're going to learn for binomial distribution is going to seem so simple. You're like, that can't possibly be right. But let's do this one. And a couple of videos ago, we showed that, that uh, the formulas, these formulas actually do work. We did it longhand, and we did it this way based on a probability distribution, and it worked. Here's our sum products formula that we've been using for a bunch of videos here. We want our x's. Uh, we don't have the probability distribution, so we can't do it. Actually, no, I have it down here. Uh, let's move this. Watch this. Here's a great trick. If you point to the edge and click and drag up, that's moving. So equals sum product. And then I'm going to highlight this range right here, comma, and this range right here. Because our formula says add up all the x's times the probability. Sum product does exactly that. Takes all the x's, all the probabilities. By the way, these two ranges have to be the same dimensions for sum product. And hit Enter. Oh, 0.6. Now watch this. The formula for a binomial distribution, because you don't always have all the values. You don't have your distribution. That's the advantage of using this. And, and by the way, sometimes they get you know, um, you know, a lot larger. So adding them up by hand using the sum function may be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, but watch this. It's just n times p. That's the mean for a, a probability distribution equals. And we did our n times our p, and then enter. And that sort of makes sense, because uh, the probability uh, that we on one try is 0.1. So when we multiply six tries by that, we get our, our average. Now think about this. This formula, n times p, we, we saw that that works. Uh, we see that it's the same as this one. And we proved that this one's the exact same as if we had all the values. So all three of them, all three different methods uh, uh, work. Now we did this one last time also, equals sum product. And we had to, in parentheses, because we had to take deviation squared and then multiply them times all of the probabilities. 
So we're going to have to, in parentheses, highlight all of our x's minus our single value, because each one of the values in this range has to be subtracted, have to have subtracted from it the mean. Close parentheses, caret 2. That's the first array. And then we have to put a comma and then simply get our probabilities. Close parentheses. Now remember, that's not it. The last two videos, uh, last three videos, we saw that we have to take the square root of that. So we'll just put square root around this right here. And then enter. Ah, so the square root is that. Now watch this. The, the formula for binome dist, see the n times the p? That's really just the mean. So it's the mean times 1 minus p and take the square root. And that's it. And we'll get the same answer. We don't have to you know, calculate all this or anything. So equals square root. I'm just going to take this right here, because I've already calculated it, times in parentheses 1 minus my p. And then enter. Absolutely amazing. Now, um, if we go over to our PDFs, we can see that formula. There's the formula here, expected value and standard deviation for binomial distribution. There they are, where n is the fixed number of trials and p is the probability of success. OK, so on average over the, the six days, so every day there's a 0.6. So you can see 0.6 of the one plane every day on average is coming in late, where uh, the 5.4 rest of the planes are coming in uh, on time. Hey, remember we said the uh, average used for planning or, or whatever is a typical value. It doesn't always have to be exactly equal to one of the x values. All right, uh, so that is um, our second example of how to use the binome dist. When we come back, we have one more video. Uh, I'm going to show you some tricks with charts. See you then.